Hey, my name is JC McCauley, and I want to really encourage you to take time out of your schedule and watch artistic expressions. I mean, they're going to give you all the information you need to know about the art scene here in Greater Hartford, in Connecticut, in fact, in New England. I'm sure, they're going to have some guests from around the country, and maybe even some international guests. So check it out on your local TV station, Artistic Expressions, with George, my man, Milner. Artistic Expressions. I'm your host, Michelle Thomas. Today's guest is Joe Young. He's a local artist, cartoonist, writer, film producer. We're going to talk with him and find out what his projects are and really get into his head and find out what kind of, what kind of things started him out as an artist. So sit back and enjoy the show. Thank you. your head as high as you can high enough to see who you are little man life sometimes is cold and cruel maybe no one else will tell you so remember that you are black gold black gold you are black gold welcome back to artistic expressions and with me is joe young thank you so much for joining good. us it was good. Now, come on now, let's do it. You know, you are formal, you know what I mean? You are formal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add the brand new. <laughs> Gotta call you by your last name, you know what I mean? No, please don't. No, no, no. Michelle was good. So, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm yes. doing well. I'm, I'm doing even better now that I'm on artistic expression. It doesn't get better than this. <laughs> Very nice. So, I want to um, kind of talk to you about a whole range of things because when I was thinking about interviewing you, it's like, well, where do you really begin? Because you do so much mm -hmm. and you've done a lot mm -hmm. in your kind of history. So let's at least mm -hmm. kind of talk about the early history just to get a context yeah. of who Joe Young is what, and what you have done for your start. Because then we'll get to the big stuff. But the big stuff is the beginning because that's what set it off. Nice. This other stuff is small. Let's get you, it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to take your lead and try to follow, you know, keep it simple. <laughs> you know, I'm a little slow, so, you know, keep it simple. <laughs> All right. So when you were starting out, let's mm -hmm. go back to little boy Joe Young. Mm. What, what was your aspiration? What were you thinking? What were you wanting to do? Well, ever since I've been small, I've always been into self-expression. At seven years old, I worked, wrote my first play called John Lee. Okay. So I was kind of like a ham, you know, I was ADD. We didn't call it back then, he was just bad. <laughs> he was you know just bad. I was just bad, we didn't have names to it. Folks couldn't get paid, you know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. A little so, hyper? A little, little hype, like okay. you probably. Absolutely. You know, we all artists <laughs> cut from the same stone. Okay. So just, just had a lot of energy, couldn't stay still, but I love to uh, write. People always say, you know, you've always drawn since you were, no, I didn't start yeah. drawing until later on. Okay. okay. Yeah. What were you writing? Plays. Yeah. Um, I wrote my first play, John Lee. It was about um, an underdog who has to fight monsters and he overcomes. And it's funny how things come full circle. Even today, it's that same thing with different names. Yeah. Just recycled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so, you know, you can identify with it. it People gravitate towards it. And yes, yes, ma'am. It's familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, so, did that play ever become a production? Like, did you, your friends, like, how? Did no, I did it in front of my family, you know. Okay. I come from a family, big family, too, so I had an audience. I come from a family of seven, three sets of twins, man. So, you know, it, it was, to me, it was like having it on international TV at the time, you know, right. that was your only reference. And, but I had an audience, man. Right. And it was well received and a lot of people. Oh, it wasn't well received. No, my brother was like, yo, <laughs> you phony, you know, right. that's weak. So yeah, humble me and right. keep it 100. With a popcorn at. <laughs> you know, so it's all good. So, but then you kept going. Mm -hmm. And then when you say uh, the drawing came later, how, how much later? When I got into, um, when I was in middle school, I started doodling. And then towards high school, doodling a little bit more. Okay. 
and then it was at college that I really started to get the pads and started to combine the writing with the drawing, and then I came up with a comic strip. So why why cartooning? Why comics? What what was the draw in that? I don't know. I've always been fascinated with comic art. I was one of those okay. kids who loved comic books. You know, Marvel. You know, okay. I, I wasn't feeling DC till later on when I was Marvel. <laughs> but then I liked the cartoony stuff, like the Richie Rich. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, character Harvey comics, mm -hmm. but it wasn't characters of color. So you know, I started drawing little. Black characters, right. you know what I'm saying? That's Having true. Franklin in the strip wasn't enough. It was only <laughs> right. one of them, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Nice. So then, as you're, you know, kind of developing that skill, mm -hmm. tell me about your, the creation of your cartoon and your comic strip. And then, you know, Charles Schultz was one of my favorites. Um, his story of, a lot of people don't realize that he, he wasn't, making any traction when he first started. He, was, he had so many doors closed on him, yeah. but he had such a strong belief in his character that he kept pushing and kept pushing and it finally broke open for him. But I like the warmth in his characters. Okay. If you look at my Scruples comic strip, you see a lot of warmth yeah. uh, in it. Um, social consciousness, even though Schultz wasn't doing that, that's, mm -hmm. but I could identify, you know, with those type of uh, characters where characters had to overcome certain things. But I did like the mirth and stuff, and I love humor, okay. you, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I came up, you know, with, with a comic strip scruple. So what I did was combine my love for writing and combine, combine it with uh, the drawing came out of a comic strip, and a comic strip is no more than a visual play on paper. Right. It's got characters, sounds, themes, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So. So when you were developing these characters, um, did you have people in mind, or was it just all imagination? It was just, it was all imagination. Okay. But imagination. they all have very distinct characters. Yeah, they do. They all have certain personality. personalities. So I guess, you know, maybe unconsciously, they were, you know, different people. But the lead yeah. character, Dr. Joe, was that you? Well, he's a bit of anybody who uh, wants to achieve or um, who likes to ask, to get answers through asking questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? One of the most yeah. dangerous people are people who ask questions, you know what I mean? <laughs> you get up on the stand, and a prosecutor come at you, you know, he asking questions, you know? So, you know, you dangerous, you're asking me a lot of questions now, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I hope I can answer. No, you're good, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so, when in writing for Scruples, mm -hmm. um, that's a great opportunity to get out what's in your head mm. and, 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 you know, ask those hard questions or sometimes superficial, easy questions. Mm. What was your goal? What was your direction? In that? You know, I just was one, I, I think a lot. I um, ponder about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was therapeutic being, and, and, it, and it kind of selfish. You're able to put your thoughts and your angles out there. Uh, and people, you know, watch. And um, but the beauty of I think of art, what we do, uh, is the fact that you can make change without being preachy or judgmental. Yeah. You know, art's a powerful, powerful tool. It is. Yeah. Art is a weapon. Well, you got Hendrix back there. You know what I mean? <coughs> it's, a uh, it's a strong statement. <laughs> yes, man. So good. Um, I love that. I just love that kind of uh, power that one writing has, but then you have the visual element. Mm. And you can sway your audience. You can move the mind to uh, kind of where you want it to go. Oh, art is powerful, you know, and that's what is sometimes disappointing in these days and times where schools are taking out art programs where first thing to go. it's the first thing to go, where it should be the last. I mean, when you look at um, the days of old, even in war, the the emperors or they would go after the artists first because they take out that culture. You don't know your history. You got nothing. That's right. That's right. And so the the artists were the um, were were the um, prophets. Were you know everything else? So you know, and war they get it, but yeah, and, philosophers, yeah. everything. So so it's powerful. Extremely. Mm -hmm. In in the reverse though, yeah. uh, you look at the art in the uh, '60s or during the Renaissance that transformed the societies. So art, if it's used correctly, it's just as powerful as a tool, as a, as a weapon, because you change minds, yeah. not through force. Very subtly. Well, subtly, yep. Yeah. Can't be overt. 
on a side, so what, what's your personal take on um, just the direction of art today? Like, do you do you feel that we have that um, there's new art being created, or you know, because like the Renaissance, something very powerful happened, or you know, mm -hmm. avant garde art. But then here we are, 2014. Is there anything new under the sun? Yeah, I think there's a lot of art in different disciplines. I think um, a lot you mentioned about the Renaissance. A lot has to do with what's going on in the world and society. Mm -hmm. You know, during the 60s, there was a lot of stuff, so some of the greatest folks came out. Yeah. Now is a great time, too, with all this turmoil, um, uh, domestically, internationally, yeah. uh, the shift of paradigms in society, so it's a great time, and art is all going in right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling a little kind of surge of energy, and yeah. you know, I know I feel it personally just even in my own work as far as even having that commentary, having right. social commentary. And the beautiful thing is now artists have a platform to do things we have never done before and that's called technology. So if you're able, before we might have a little gallery show now, you can put it up on Anywhere. Facebook, Twitter, around anything, the world, around instantly. The world, instantly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have a, yes, a wider, broader audience just like that. If you handle that business, you got PayPal too, so you ain't no triple right. that, that, that <laughs> revenue stream, you know what I mean? Click of a button. You know what I mean? So. Very nice. So, t so now, uh, with Scruples, where did that take you? Because that was, you know. That was a start. You know, yeah. I was 80, I was 21. I became a single parent, you know. Okay. And that was a difficult time. I'm like, yo, how am I going to get this art out? My yeah. son Kyle. Uh, but, you know, um, God, um, he's um, unpredictable, has a sense of humor. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I got this child. Well, what it made me do was get disciplined. No more hanging out, no more chilling. I became focused. <laughs> so now, for, the, for two years, I'm trying to get this thing syndicated. But I start working on my craft, working on my craft. Yeah. And then I, I got a deal in New York with the Religious News Service, RNS. And I became a syndicated cartoonist at 21. But had not... I'd been focused at, you know what I'm saying? So, right. my son Kyle's responsible for a lot of this. Necessities. Like Necessity. Yeah, there so you, you go. had to, <laughs> you needed yes. to make something happen. That's right. Turn, yeah, what you think is lemon is lemonade, but it's already lemonade. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Kyle, does he, I mean, I'm sure he, you know, knows where he comes from and, you know, kind of has that, you know, that he was part of this reasoning for you taking off. Well, Kyle's so laid back. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you get mad, he's so laid back. Right. Yeah, no, but he, he's, a, he's a good guy. He's very talented. And, you know, all my children, you know, my Johnny, they call him Tang Sauce. And then you got my daughter Paige. She's really getting into art, but she has a business idea on her because oh, okay. she's like dangerous. Well, she was hanging with, with dad. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was, she was born with a paintbrush too. and a rake car. You know what I mean? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, is Kyle still doing any of the art? Oh, yeah, he's a rapper. His thing is music, making beats, rapping. But he can uh, he can draw, he can um, do video, he can yeah. direct. He's just, he's just amazing. Yeah. And so was part of your philosophy with your children to keep them under your wing? You know, some, some parents want to pass on what they do as, you know, kind of, we're going to build a dynasty. Yeah, know? well, no, I never force it. It's just yeah. naturally, you, you know, you are what you are. Yeah. Next to, you know, your kids are on art, so of course they're going to know it. It's a part of who you are. You know, I never yeah. forced it. You didn't you know. discourage them. No, no, no. They were just part of it. It was natural, you know. How does that feel for you, though, that they, you know, kind of follow in some artistic... I'm scared to death. I mean, they got to deal with them pitfalls <laughs> and all that. Go get a job and, you know, no, it's beautiful. But, you know, there's certain <laughs> things that artists have to deal with that most because we see things yeah. different. You know, so just hopefully that they have balance, absolutely, which is the key because we as artists can be out there. Mm -hmm. So I, and a I, core, a strong core, and a strong core. Is your, you know, right, guide in line. So I just hope they can go up and down. They can go up and down, but I strong. want them to have balance <laughs> yeah. and reason. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Do you have balance in you? Sometimes, sometimes not. I'm a work in progress. Nice. I'm getting better though. Yes, I'm getting better. I know. No, no, no. You got it together. You got it together. All right. So I'm going to do, can I do something impromptu? It depends yeah. what it is. Do, do, do we clear this with the lawyers? 
No, no, we, I'm, I'm going to try this out. So, because we're going to move past scruples, but could you uh, do uh, impromptu um, drawing? Okay. Of maybe one of your fair, favorite scruples, Karen? Okay, okay. Oh, you Let's got me on the spot. I'd have brought the big pen. You got this little uh, oh, Sharpie. This is, you know I mean? know. I don't have a, the big fat one, right? I'll hold it. Okay. Can stand up. Okay. Can, can I go? Am side? I blocking? Oh, you got to do, do on that side? Okay. Yeah, I'm we'll right-handed. Yeah, you do it like this. I'm going to do guidelines, too. You understand? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, so one, I'll hold it stable. I think we're good. One yeah. of my favorite characters um, is, they think it's a boy, but it's really a girl. And she's Dr. Joe's sidekick. And her name is Bubblegum. And if you read my graphic novels or see my Christmas special, you'll see Bubblegum. I'll give it a little shade, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then we'll, we'll brand it and we'll put her on an AE hat, artistic expression hat, and <laughs> nice, you come out with nice. your apparel and all that. <laughs> so the character's name is Bubblegum in the Scruples comic strip. You do some heights and dights and little cross hatching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Nice, Bubble very gum. nice. All right. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Oh, you got me on that one. Ah, no, I got to keep you on your toes. You got to, you got to. It's so funny, like, in my office, like, because I'm always now handling the business side of things. Right. Cats be with me for, like, cats be with me. In my That's life. We, this, this, I'm in, you know what I'm saying, I'm keeping it with Come on, we here, this is it. A particular individual was in my business. No, right. these dudes, man, in my office, they didn't realize that I draw at first when they first, because they always see me. Yep. But I'm an artist first and foremost. Yeah. 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 That's right. Gotta be able to always be on point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put you on the spot too. You yeah, ready? I don't draw. I don't draw. No, I don't draw on the spot. Yeah, yeah. You paint. <laughs> I'm in the studio. It's gotta be deep. I gotta have the incense and the music. I gotta have my vibe. Yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> it's very different. Okay. No, it's good. Thank you, though. You're welcome. Um, okay, so let's move. You know, past the scruples and what opened up for you. I was wondering why that. I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, that's a, that was suspect. It, it, it's like, it's not random just sitting there. Next, I'm going to show him, tell George, George, what, what else? Okay, all right. All right, so what, what did you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Moving past, you know, the beginning of Scoop Foods, what did that open up for you? So then, because you, oh, wait, what about the, um, tell about the, um, the Guinness book? That came after. Okay, so what, so give me the timeline. Scruples was in the late 80s. Yeah. Uh, 90s, I started a nonprofit organization called the Joe Picture This Show. Yes. Where we, you see, when you do cartoons, people naturally put kids with it. Yeah. And so then people said, can you teach my kid to draw, blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. And yeah. then I started a nonprofit called Joe Picture This Show, and we started training kids in um, uh, cartooning. And then I looked How many people to start? Like, how was staff? Give me just a roundabout. You know, Staff of 20 or just me and five people. When I first started, started well, yeah. we, had, we had a board. We have a board of directors. So okay. it was originally, you know, on that board, we had about 12 people. I mean, I had like John Stewart, the fire chief. Jesse Campbell was the police chief then. Um, Elijah Young, he passed out. Tiffany Young's dad was wow. at sea. I mean, I had these trailblazers, man. Yeah, I see. And so, but if <laughs> you want. Like cousin John or, you know. Oh, oh, but you need Pookie to mix and keep it 100. You, you, you know what I'm saying? I, I need them to go with Pookie and Alize and Hennessy and them. And them, and them. And them. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but again, you know, I tried to bring some of these trailblazers to show me because I didn't know. I was like, what, at that time, 26, nice. 25, okay. I started my nonprofit. And then we just started it. And then we were at Sands and Bevy Square. Yeah. We probably had about, you know, staffed and probably had about five staffed in. And then um, we had about 20 kids in the program, and it okay. just grew and grew and grew and grew. Who helped you with your nonprofit? I had um, uh, Leslie Mansell help start it with Sherry Pullum. Okay. And, um, and, it, and it, just, it just grew. Yeah. And then we started doing drama and touring with kids. You know, so it wasn't just cartooning. It was in theater. And then I got into to learning how to direct and coach okay. and act and all that stuff. Okay. And um, so the Joe picture this show, mm -hmm. give me, I guess, a time frame, like how long. That's still here. 
So Since 89, I started 89. Is it's it still, under the same name? Oh, yeah, it's still around. It's oh, still okay. under the same name. Okay. We do work in, like, Kinsella Middle School and, mm -hmm. you know, different places. Boys and Girls Club, we're just about to start with Jim Oki. Uh, okay. So, um, we got that, and, uh, and the comic strip was still going. Yeah. Then I got into animation. Yes. And then I decided, you know, I want to do a, a project with as many youth as possible. Okay. And I was, you know, I had a grant from the city of Hartford. And there was a park called Willie Ware on Windsor Street. And I had the Public Works build this big uh, uh, easel, six feet high. And I said, I'm going to do a comic strip, oh, okay. the length of a football field. So I called Ray Allen, came in and helped, paid for oh, it in the city. Oh, and really? Gal King came in. And we did a comic strip, the length of the football field, the Scruples characters uh, that dealt with literacy. You got 5,000 kids paying on it. Yeah. And I just did it because I just needed an idea for something. I had to come up with something for the funding. Right. And so. Right. <laughs> you got to use the money. You got to use it. And so, and then it's a testimony to when you do something positive, you're trying to help people, good things happen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, the current does our a story, yeah. Harvard Current. And then once you get in the current, there's something called the Wire Associated Press. Okay. And that, that one and that, all of a sudden, here comes Boston Globe, gave me a full page. Right. New York Times, right. full page. USA no, Today. Big time. No, I ain't big time. That's God. <laughs> that is me. It was me. I, you know, I would be doing Joe's Kids page. Right. So, um, and then, and, and then, Guinness World Record. Guinness people heard it. They sent me a Guinness World Record for it. Then I'm in Ripley's. Believe it or not. You know, you just sitting back saying. Going on tour. No, no, you sitting back saying this is bigger than me. This ain't got nothing to do with right, me. Right. You don't know what kid might have painted on that became something. That's right. And so, and then I was volunteering at that time too, going around showing kids how to draw. And then the White House got wind of it, and oh. they gave me the Daily Point of Light award from the White House. Right. And I'm just like, I just did it to. Now, when you say that, you, so you didn't put in for any of these things. It's, mm -mm. You know, one thing led to another. At least and another. Yeah. And, and, and then it came to you. And that's what happens. And there's a saying, Michelle that I live by, I just told my daughter this. Yeah. It is so profound. I heard somebody say it and, and it just stuck with me. It says, if you run after success, success runs away. But if you run after excellence, success runs towards you. Or maybe Martin Luther King spend it a little bit better. If you can make a better mousetrap than your neighbor, even if it's in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to your door. Even if it's in Harford, the world will make it be into your door. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, that's right. Harford's on the map. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Harford has got to be so small, we can compete. Yeah, Harford's on the map. It's on and the map. there's a lot of talent coming out of here. Yeah, but we, and we need the people in Harford to support, yeah. you know, the Michelle, the Michelle's, the Kelvin, yeah. uh, uh, you know, and, you know, so that's another story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think, though, um, you have like a, a just so much experience and knowledge in, you know, from paving your way with like even the nonprofit mm -hmm. and all the different, all these yeah. different things. Um, it would be kind of beneficial for someone to know that path, to know how to navigate through that, because I think that's kind of lacking in a lot of our, you know, artists, you know, trying to come up and you know, how to do, you know, how to create a nonprofit. I mean, they, they need a blueprint. You know, when right. we did it, we did it on our own. You, you're right. I don't know what to do. I know what not to do. So I come right, out right. and book it on me what not to what do. What not to do. <laughs> I know that's right. But yeah, I think that in the arts, it's kind of necessary. You know, some it's needed on some level. Yes. Because, yes. you know, you have these isolated individuals who might have these great ideas, but how do we kind of you know, get them to be a, a greater idea, not just kind of in your own studio. Are you talking about like for an artist to make it financially or no, just to... No, I mean on the, on the level of like mm. you were working with children, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to provide a service for them mm -hmm. to, so that they could learn how to right, 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 comics right. and, yes. you know, how to, yes. how to draw these comic strips and that yeah. kind of thing. You know, that's passing the baton. That's, that's right. giving the gift to someone else. Mm. And so that idea and that even that project, you know, mm. 
one time was enough for an individual, but that is uh, that was a great, you know, kind of testament to the arts of saying, you know, passing this on to someone. Mm -hmm. But that happened in a way where you know you had that kind of backing to produce that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just think it's awesome. No, so you know what the key is. Even though I told you the story, uh, one thing I, you know, which was instilled in me, and I think. Part of the reason why a lot of good things happen to me yeah. is when you give. It always comes back to you, man. That karma. We always talk about help or some fall, a safe fall, or something. I can't stand. But because <laughs> they, they, they did bad, that's karma. But there's good karma too, man. When, when you do yeah. good stuff, it comes to yeah. you. What about the law of attraction? I believe in all that, but that's all biblical too. Yeah, yeah. I believe in all that. What you, that energy you put out, that's what you get. It's physics almost. Yeah. Yep, so you know, you've seen a lot of success. You've helped a lot of people, and so. I'm, yeah, trying to continue, right? You gotta mm -hmm. stay humble and just kind of mm -hmm. give, give, give. It does come back. It comes back to you in more ways than you can imagine. You know, it's not just financial or anything like that. No, it's not. A, but there's a, there's a heart thing in there. You see a lot of people who are doing it, and believe it or not, you think, oh, they're rich because they, no, because they got a big heart. That's what they, yeah. they got it. So, I'm going to go to church. <laughs> Sister Moore. Sister Thomas. Bye. All right, so, mm -hmm. we're moving on. Let's move on. To bigger and be better things, mm -hmm. or how would you describe your journey now? Where are you going? Um, it's a good time for me right now, yeah. to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, we're... Um, premiering a movie called Diamond Rough, yeah. which is the first major independent homegrown, I'm talking about from Hartford, not to get major distribution, and it's going yeah. to be in you know, movie theaters. Uh, you know, I wrote a book called Diamond Rough. Yeah. When did you write it? How long well, man, believe it or not, I wrote Diamond Rough in 97. It was just sitting there for decades. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I said, you know what, I want to show people when you start achieving, you see a lot of people be better. They be looking at you like, damn, how, you know, he just did yeah. it. And I wanted to show them, I'm going to take this manuscript. I went in front of me and Kyle, went in front of YouTube, and we're going to say, we're going to take this manuscript and show you how to uh, revise it, uh, get it printed, get the ISBNs, and get yeah. distribution for it. Okay. And I told the public I was going to do that. We do a YouTube entry every week, and I said, then I got to challenge myself, too. I said, I'm going to do a movie, not like, you know, just a regular to get my little camera and shoot a movie and call it a movie. Okay. Do something that is going to have a couple celebrities in it and is going to be able to get picked up by Hollywood. Okay. And that's how we, we, we did that. This has been the most, it took us five years. Yeah. I miscalculated. I thought it was going to take us like two years. It took us five <laughs> hard years. Anything you can imagine yeah. it seemed like we went through. Okay. I mean, we sold cars. Me and Kyle sold cars. We struggled, you know, the negative. We miscalculated. Then sure. here comes the recession. Yeah. But without the recession, I couldn't have made the movie. Why is that? We had to be creative. Yeah. Actors were half price. Buildings were empty. Yeah. And then, again, we had that grace on us. I don't care how hard I worked. And if I did it today, it may not happen. You just got to have a certain favor on it, timing, and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can work hard things, but you just keep going. Right. But nothing guarantees that. Yeah. You know, and you gotta have a little bit of luck. What do they call it? Timing, fair, whatever you call right, it. Right, right. You, you know, but we, we, we. It we, was all in there. It was all, <laughs> but you know, again, you look historically, you gotta go, people always think that it's gonna be an easy ride. When you do great things, you gotta face that Goliath. You can have David without Goliath. You couldn't have Obama without racism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to go through it, you know. And I think if you, you know, if you want to do great things, you got to be put in great situations where there's usually a conflict. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you well, know, that seems like a common theme in your life. Like that kind of, almost like the, the challenge pushes you to your best. Yeah, but it's hard. I'm trying to right. get done. I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to do it. I'm trying to limit that. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? I learned from your mistakes. Yeah, learn from, but I want to become a system-based type of success. You right. know, where 
because you know that's like with our kids and you know people. I, I don't want them to uh, struggle. It's right. hard, man. Right. You know. Right. Oh that yeah, that's stuff my biggest. Now. That's my biggest fear with my children. I'm like I, I try to give them every ounce of every bit of knowledge I have because I'm I don't want you to struggle like I did in the mm-hmm. beginning. Yep. That was way too hard. Right. I could have done it. I could have had an easier path, and I'm like, if we lay it out. Right. They don't have to. They don't have to, <laughs> or they don't have to be in what they call the dip too long. You ever read the book The Dip? No. Oh, you got to get it called The Dip, okay. where you try and do something great. There's this dip that everybody has to get through. The reason I, you, we got this movie out now, yeah. we were able to get through this dip. Yeah. I might not have been able to get out of it in 20 years. But, you know, but if you keep going, you're eventually going to hit something. I think it was Babe Ruth who said, um, what, what do you say? It's hard to beat a man who never gives up. You know what I mean? It's Consistency like, is radical. You got to just <laughs> keep going, keep fighting your way out, whether it's personal and yeah. relationship, it's, it's business. Yeah. You know, one of the greatest fighters of all times. I mean, Tyson was great. Ali, all the dudes, brilliant. But we sleeping on Rocky Marciano. George, though, he never lost a fight, Rocky Marciano. <laughs> Ali said the only one that might have beat him was Rocky Marciano. His mind was, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I want that type of mindset. Yeah. I want to be slick and neat. I want to be like, I can't. Talking junk. No, I want to. No, you can talk <laughs> junk, but I'm saying, you, you, but you, like you said, you got to be humble. Yeah. And you just got to believe, you know? Yeah. So what made you write, a, like, you, you wrote that some years ago. So what made you write a book about Hartford? Well, actually, it was a bad experience. I mean, the kids were in this competition uh, with my touring company. We lost them fairly. And uh, I was so disappointed that if somebody had a problem with me, they took it out on the kids. And so if you read the book, there's a competition in there. It has yeah. nothing to do with this con man in the bank. I just created that stuff around that situation. So it's nothing to do with any of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. And so uh, is this, you know, your you know, baby, is this your proud moment? Or is this just kind of like you were kind of referring to this a byproduct of, uh, you know, scruples and your well, beginning? Scruples is my baby. Yeah, okay. This stuff is, is a, I mean, I enjoy it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's more commercial, but I'm happy because all the people, you're talking a lot of people. It ain't yeah. just Joe Young. You're talking three, four, five hundred people to get here. Yeah. So I'm happy that you know, we were able to achieve this great thing, even more for them than me. Because when you in like this leadership position like this, and you doing moves, and these people then sacrifice certain things for you, yeah. that's some scary stuff. Yeah. You know, so the believe right when you have people following or believing in you, and you know, you gotta right, you gotta rise to the occasion, <laughs> and that's pretty tough. It can be. It can be, but again, you, you find people who do it not just. For again, running after success, people who are who love the journey, the craft, or doing things, but you still have that. Even my family, that the stuff that they sacrifice, you know what I mean. So, yeah. but we're here. Yeah. Started from the bottom, now we're here. here. That's hey. it. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. Keep it going. Yep. <laughs> what do you hope that this um, produces? What, what kind of. Uh, well, it's based upon a book, and so I got two more movies. It's a trilogy. <laughs> okay. So I'm writing a second book called Diamond Rough. I'm either called Under the Rainbow or Over the Rainbow. Um, and I got two more movies, and, and then I got some other projects that I'm doing, my personal people on my team. Okay. And, and so, and hopefully what we do, you do and I do, is open up this door so these other filmmakers can get through. Okay. A lot of people say, can you do this for me? Can you do it? No, the door is open. Yeah. You go in, I'll share yeah, the yeah. connects and all that, but you got to have it. The door is open right now. Right, I get it. And why, what is so important right now with the movie, we did the Bushnell. I don't know if you knew about that in November. Okay. We had 2,500 people show up at the Bushnell last year. Right. It was, it was, it was amazing. It was impressive. Right. But that doesn't compare to our challenge right now. Okay. Michelle, we're in these movie theaters and why it's important for, for us to do well and there's some 15-year-old, 13-year-old girl, boy, director, producer. Hollywood's looking now because when you get in the movie theater 
it is the, the, the Georgia tell you the, 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 the box the, the box office is tracked through a system called rent track. So the studios and Hollywood is looking, how's this movie doing? They're right. tracking Hartford right now. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? If we get like two people show up in the movie house, <laughs> you know, they ain't coming They're back for coming another back. 20 years. Like, 30 yeah. years. Hartford was on the map. It was, it was, so we gotta get people in the yeah. theaters. Okay, yeah. And what I did 2,500, I gotta triple the numbers. Yeah. Just in Connecticut. Now, that ain't Wait, even what, like, what's the date? January 9th. The red carpet is on the 8th. Okay. So we got to get people there. And, uh, you know, we got a problem with me. It's bigger than Joe Young. Yeah. Show up so that little seven-year-old can get their shot or some filmmakers here who need that shot. But we're being tracked through the rent track system. So that week, we got to put some serious numbers up. Okay. So that's why I stopped doing a lot of projects right now. Yeah, My focus is on one thing. Oh, and that's another thing. If you want to be successful, yeah. concentrate on one thing. Don't be jumping around doing like... Do whatever you're the best at and get that in and the rest of it. Tyler Perry is the one who said that. Yes, he is. Yeah. You seen that little thing he yes, did? I yep. Did. One yeah. thing. One thing. Just focus that energy. And, and the rest will come. The rest will come. It'll open up. Yep. Yeah. And it's gotta be something you're in love with, something you're passionate with. Yeah. I believe that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, so let's get some of the particulars, I guess, we'll, we'll of the movie, you know, when, where, that kind of thing. That way I can at least uh, put that on the... Uh... Okay, no, well, like I said, January 8th in Hartford is the first one. Where uh, at, though? The Spotlight Theater in, in Hartford. Okay. Uh, in the morning at 10 o'clock, there's going to be high school field trips there coming in. We got a lot of groups already coming in. Okay. It'll probably sell out in about another two weeks. And in the evening, it starts at 6.30 or 6, I'll get you the exact time. Okay. It's going to be a red carpet and then the movie show. So we'll have some celebs there. We'll have uh, Hartford celebs there. We yeah. have good people there. You know, Pookie will be there with, you know, <laughs> Snoop from The Wire. You know what I mean? And so uh, we do that. And then, uh, then the ninth is when it breaks in different parts of the country. Okay. And then on the... Uh, when is it? Um, I think the ninth. No, the ninth in Manchester. We're at Parquet Cinema too. They have a red carpet for high school students in the Manchester area, east of the river. Yeah. Then on Saturday, uh, we do a red carpet up at Entertainment Cinemas in Springfield, and then it's just screened in different places. You know, Georgia. You know, New York, Hartford, yeah. and then uh, the big one. I think where we gotta kill it is in. Atlanta at the Landmark Theater in Atlanta, January fifteenth. So we a lot of people flying down to Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, Maury Star, remember Maury Star? No. Remember New Kids on the Block, New Edition. He started all those groups. Oh goodness, yeah. He's gonna That's be labor. like he's gonna be like one of the hosts <laughs> there, and showing our no, age. Nice, nice. You know, so there's gonna be a lot of people coming in from ATL from all over the country. That's exciting, huh? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun, and but <laughs> again. I can't sleep on it. It's a great opportunity, but it could be a great disaster, too, if we don't right. get these numbers. Right. And so give a typical day in uh, Joe Young right now. Uh, you know. Do you sleep? <laughs> you know, honestly, at least once a week, I don't go to sleep. We work through the night, and even Kyle. I can imagine, yeah. You, and, and then you train yourself after a while, too. If you can get over the hump of 3 in the morning, you can make it through. And then it's like, it's another day. And, and again, that little boy we talked about. But all the energy, it kicks it now. But yeah. when I sleep, I sleep. Right. You know, because it catches, because it'll catch, catch up to you, up. just shut you down. You walking, like, I'm down. you walking on the street, you just drop because right. you ain't got no sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the typical day is, um, I'm up at um, probably four every morning. Yeah. I go to the gym. Okay. Uh, and I get ready. I do, I do assignments for everybody on my team okay. the day before. Yeah. And then. Um, then I go down and I teach a class at Kinsella. Okay. Uh, what class is that? Like on Tuesday and Thursdays, I teach filmmaking and okay. animation, not animation, more cartooning and writing. And then um, uh, in the morning, I'll have, maybe have a meeting. Mm -hmm. And then I teach a class in the afternoon. Okay. And then like meetings, then I work on the book, then meetings, and then a team meeting or something like that. How long and, do you give yourself to work on a book a day? An hour. I'm very yeah. regimented to a fault. You've been in the service. I've never been in the service, but in right. my past life, I must have been in the service. <laughs> I'm like 
regimented to himself that my team be hating me. Right. Oh, how's he so, you know, what's wrong with him? You, you, you know, but I th it's, it's a gift to be consistent. I'm consistent to a fault. Yeah. And I do suffer from workaholism. I'm working on it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You're yeah. laughing, but I'm, I'm serious. I'm, it's I'm, not good I'm, if no, you ain't balanced. Like... You, you know, and, um, and I go to bed maybe most nights, you know, I try to, get, you know, I might go to bed by one and I'm up by four or something. Right. Yeah. You know, normally though, and I normally I get about five hours okay. when I don't, or I, it depends on the project. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. And I got a good team too. Okay. Good team. So, is there any anyone that kind of has to put Joe Young in his place to say, okay, you got you got to stop, or is that just all internal? No, I got people who I'm you know. So, you know, my father, Joseph Young Senior. Yeah. He gets mad at me. Yeah. Yep. He probably keeps me more grounded than anybody. Yeah. Dad is like eighty. How old is Dad now? Eighty-five. Okay. He calls me every day. We talk every oh, day. He wow. tells me about the weather. Yeah. He hangs up the phone on me. <laughs> he yells at me. You know, when, you know, we had financial problems, he told me before we did it. You yeah. went over your head. Nice. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I go to him for support, but, and my brother Tony. Okay. He's, he, he's the voice of reason, too. Nice. And then some people on my team, you know, yeah, Janetta's, yeah. you know, voice of reason, Kyle's a voice of reason. Okay. You, you know, so. I mean, you surround yourself with a nice core. Uh, not just yes people now either. You no, know, people, no, yeah. People, people who are gonna... yeah, I work with quit twice a year on me. <laughs> Damn, I ain't messing with you today. <laughs> you said it kind of mild, you know. <laughs> the, yeah, I can't, you know, go off. It, 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 some words in there, and letters in the beginning of the alphabet. <laughs> right. Before E. And you'd, you'd no, before yeah, before G. <laughs> And what do you do? You just, that's just Joe, and you just gotta. What? I'm saying, like, you, that's a lot, right? To be on your team and. What do you mean when they get going in on me? Yeah. I go in back. And then, nice. <laughs> and then you make up, you know, because the overall, you know what you, what you, you gotta do. Yeah. And it's hard when you got people with strong personalities. Yeah. You know, so, but I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this thing out, Michelle Thomas. So do you think your direction is going to be to teach filmmaking to children and stay on that path? I just want to, believe it or not, I just want to write. That's okay. what all I want to do. Yeah. Eventually, you know, I just want to, you know, just maybe just write. I, you know, I think I have a gift for producing, okay. for getting things done. Yeah. But I think I enjoy creating more than anything else. But do you think you'll be satisfied doing that when you have that type of personality and energy? Where writing is kind of contained, even though it, it comes from that deeper place. But what are you going to do with that energy? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, or what I love to do is like, um, like you talked about before, maybe write books of what not to do mm -hmm, to help people. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, who knows? I might get back into cartooning more. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Why did you stop doing cartooning? That? Yeah. The business and the things, and I want to move on to. I was intrigued by you know filmmaking. Okay. It's hard too. The hardest thing I've ever done is filmmaking. Yeah. People want to make a movie. What they gotta understand is, uh, and George can attest to this, it's twenty five percent craft and seventy five percent business, and it's hard. Yeah. And dealing with these cats in Hollywood for the yeah. first time, I've never seen nothing like this before. Yeah. They're like some of them are like controlled psychopaths. <laughs> Psychopath. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see. I'm. I'm not the front people person <laughs> type. I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot. You, you know. What I, mean? I enjoy the solitude of my studio, and I can work, and it's just me. That's what I want. You know what I want? <laughs> to be honest with you, that would be nice. Just to have like a studio, yeah. and just ain't hey, no deadlines, yeah. no nothing. That's where I want to see well, you. It's deadlines. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's deadlines. But you understand what I'm saying? You don't have the daily phone blown. Well, right. you probably still do. I mean, I do now because yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah. I'm doing. But still, when I, but see, I'm up two a.m. Okay. All right. <laughs> because from two to six, no one's ringing my phone, mm. and I can be in the studio, peaceful, working, and you know, completely focused. So right. I do enjoy that. And then after that. 
I'm running for everyone else. So there is yeah. that, you know. <laughs> and your daughter is very talented. Oh, goodness. Very oh, talented. Yeah, she's, she's, she's doing some stuff. She is. She's excited. She, oh, yeah, tell us about your, what you're doing right now. Well, one of the things I do is I teach a class, a master art class at the Hartford Public Library, uh, pen and ink, um, and showing people about storytelling and uh, the basis of how to create a graphic novel. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. A lot of it, you know, it's just a fun thing, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of adults. Your daughter's in there with adults. It's really an adult class. Yeah, I know. I see and that. So like, there's all these cool. adults and daddy sitting in there. And she's doing better than all of them. You know she's, she's loving. She was so excited. Yeah, it was good to have her. Nice. Mm -hmm. What made you do that? I mean, no, they came to me. Oh, yeah? yeah they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, do a workshop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very they do nice. a workshop. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. See, it just keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's great for you. One, keeps you humble, but it also keeps providing you an opportunity to give and keeping it at that level where... Oh, and they keep you on your toes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I prepared this presentation, right? Yeah. And I'm trying to show them the history of cartoonists, you know? <laughs> Again, like, that and I had it, Bill Waters and blah, blah, blah. And this lady says, ain't no women cartooning something. Uh, yes. You were here? Yeah. And this, she was serious. And that's why I love it because it keeps me on my game. So, and I'm always making a workshop better. Now I include women, but you can't do it if you don't do it. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. It's, and I love, and I love that where I'm challenged and because yeah. I'm not, I'm far from perfect. And so I'm, I'm a student. Good. That's I'm a what, student. That's right. We all should, yeah, still be, have that child heart, be teachable. Humble. Open-minded. Open-minded. That's right. Transparent. Yeah. Flexible. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, when you're rigid, what happens? You're brittle. You break. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Bruce Lee said you got to be like water. Yeah. <laughs> well, we talked about Bruce Lee oh, and Alize. <laughs> but we flip it. We go pre right. and we go back to... And it's me and them. And them. Now Bruce Lee. We love Bruce Lee. <laughs> oh, yeah. we, keep it, we keep it, you know, versatile. Very nice. So, uh, personally, what advice would you give um, to young artists in their craft? What, what, what advice would you give them? That it's all possible. Nice. Make sure it's about the craft and you're not running after success. Yeah. And be true to it. Um, surround yourself with masters to get to the next level. Yeah. What I want to do is surround myself with people who are better than me in every area, in every area. Yeah. You know, um, I can't, uh, George Clinton from Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant man. We won't go deep into it, but yeah. I was talking to him. He says how he made it. Yeah. Because his work is out there. It's all over the place. Yeah. But it's brilliant. He said, I surrounded myself with the best of the best in different areas and just put them together. Yeah. And he knew it was going to be quirky, but it was going to be a masterpiece. Right. So that was inspiring to hear George Clinton say that. Yeah. I can see a little of that in you when you work. I mean, you definitely surround yourself with, you know, key players. <laughs> so. I got to get Michelle Thomas in the mix. <laughs> we right here. Yeah, we right here. I want to be up in that mix, too. I want to be able to do stuff like that, man. You know, you know what I mean? You need for him to talk? I can write the, the, the exactly, words to it. Right, we'll do a story. Yeah, guy. yep. See, when it comes to. Where's um, my lavalier? I'm not sure. Can we, it's fine. We got you still can hear me? Okay. Um, if it comes to cartooning, I'll just have Maddie come in. You know, she's my goal. She'll be my goal. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> I can, you know, I can look at a flower and paint what I see, but that coming from the mind and mm -hmm. giving it expression instantly. Mm -hmm. She, she has that on point. I mean, mm -hmm. That has got this a different part of the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's great for her to have the classics behind it, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. I always tell her, know the rules so you know what you're breaking. You know, start from, start from that base, but, you know, know why you're breaking them. Mm -hmm. Don't just break them for no reason. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's, that's what's up. Yeah. So that's great advice. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of great talent. Young people yeah. I'm seeing coming up, nice. Yeah. But even now, older people, you got filmmakers around like Pepe Vega. Uh, it, 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 there's a lot of people doing it now. They just need the shot. Yeah. They just need the shot. Yeah. 
in the chat. So venues like artistic expression, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we have a certain responsibility. This is, yeah, I, I feel that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody has to do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We got to get something out there and get people connected and hear mm -hmm. the stories and be inspired. Mm -hmm. I know that's, you know, my charge in life. Yeah, it's so, a good charge. Be the light. Inspire. Be the light. Be inspired. <laughs> Create the blueprint. Yeah. So. Yeah. So would there be anything else on the horizon? Well, I got a couple projects. I'm working on Diamond Rough 2. Yeah. I got a documentary called The Construction of Maddie Love. Okay. Matt, who works with me. Uh, he's just a regular guy who's been yeah. uh, police undercover. He's going into Hollywood to see how do you make it. Okay. Is it through hard work or is it the Illuminati? Uh, it's going nice. to be a crazy documentary. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited about that project. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And when is that starting up? That's We're in pre-production now. Okay. Nice. Out of Hartford. Yeah. Matt, I love your shut face. Up. Huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, everything. In my comic books, you always see Hartford. Hartford's been good to me. I'm in. I'm a fan. Born yeah, we raised. raised in Hartford, <laughs> you know, and that's you know. So Hartford's Hartford's been good, you know. So we'll always have a base in Hartford. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, this has um, been such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, if there's anything else you want to add, you can do so now. How much time we got? So don't like put somebody like me. It's a couple minutes. Like, yeah, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I know. I'm I was not, this, this years ago when Maury when Maury Povich had a good show. That's when it was wholesome, Maury Povich. Right. I was on the show, right? Yeah. And so I don't know because she thought I was black, the producer. She's like, if you get nervous on the show and you can't think of something, don't worry. Maury's gonna come in and Maury's <laughs> gonna intervene to help you. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I get on the show. Maury says something to me, question. And I start reciting a poem. Oh. And she's like, God, God. And I just ignored her. <laughs> True story. You just gone. <laughs> huh? You were just gone. I was just gone. And I did it too because she told me not to do it. So I'm yeah. kind of like rebellious. Yeah, I, yeah, I got that. I know you got, you got that rebel. I you definitely got, that, got that. That Angela Davis in you. <laughs> you can't tell America's me no. America's most wanted. You can't. Me. That no means yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? To, you know, but. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of everything that you're doing, yeah. your accomplishments, Thank your you. team, George. Same here. You know. Yeah, um, yeah he's definitely a good guy. Who, <laughs> he's oh, the, no, George. He's the brains he, behind all this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who has all the headaches, you or George? Has all the what? Headaches. Oh, you, he does. I he don't does, have yeah, any yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't have any People any. always. I'm a worker, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I was just thinking about, like, CEOs get paid the most, not because they talented or they because right. they have the most headaches. Yeah, they got to think the most. When, and just going through this little thing that we going through, and I see celebrities, they deserve the million dollar paycheck. They do stuff yeah. that regular people don't yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. To I don't mind being the worker bee, though. Oh, I don't mind being, no, no, no. You got to work. Yeah. You know, there's no way around it. All right. So, Michelle. Right. So, I just want to um, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much, Thank you for Joe. the opportunity. Love it. Yes. Um, this has Respect. been a pleasure. We'll definitely, you know, post all the, the times, the dates, the places mm -hmm. for Diamond Rough, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely gonna be there. Get you. Oh, but one thing. Uh, yeah. The tickets are going, man. I'm telling you, okay. by December 5th, ain't gonna be no more tickets anywhere. Nice. Okay. If. The Bush owns indication, and yeah. the theater just called me, yeah. just saying, "No, these tickets." So that's cool. a good right. That's right. That's for good. Okay. But for people, if you want to be yeah. part of it, go, go get your ticket. Call, call your local theater, see if it's in that theater. Mm -hmm. And okay. if it's not, call the theater, tell them to put it in. I know that's right. <laughs> be aggressive. Be aggressive, for real, <laughs> for real. All right. So thank you so much for joining us, John. It was a pleasure. Again. This has been Artistic Expressions with me, your host, Michelle Thomas. We had Joe Young with us. Phenomenal uh, interview, just learning about what he's doing, what he's got going on. Uh, we'll make sure we uh, post that as far as uh, Diamond Rough in theaters. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for more episodes. And remember to always support your local artists and the arts. Hold your head up. Don't give up
shout out to Artistic Expressions and I support the arts. <laughs> Shoutouts to Artistic Expressions, and I support the arts. This is El Mix and Sean Rossi. Hi, my name is Shandia. I'm a model. I'm giving a shout out to Artistic Expressions, and I support the arts. What's up, y'all? This is Joe Young, writer, cartoonist, film producer. Shout out to Artistic Expression, and I support the arts. Peace.